boots on the ground, analyzing the situation, part three. As you can see, I'm back out here in Kenosha once again. As earlier today, the Wisconsin State's Attorney declared that no charges would be filed in the shooting of Jacob Blake, which occurred here in Kenosha back in August. Now, as you guys know, I came up here twice during the situation back in August to analyze the situation. No, I was not a part of the protest. No, I did not participate in the riots. And no, I do not believe that riots and protests will accomplish anything worth 10. In the defense of the Blake family, we do sympathize with them. We do want justice, rightful justice for Jacob Blake. However, as in many other cases throughout this country, the criminal justice system has proven once again that there is no justice for the so-called black men. Officers can shoot, murder, kill, maim, harass, and hurt brothers and sisters at will. But yet they won't be prosecuted. But the question I have to our people going into 2021 is what are we going to do differently than what we've been doing for the past 100 something years? The vast majority of our people are not ready for a revolution. We will lose that battle in a heartbeat here in this country simply because we do not have any mission, any, any tanks, we do not own any military, we do not own any infrastructure. Your social, political, economic, financial, educational systems are all controlled by your supposed enemy. So how can you win a revolution if you don't even, you, if you're not clearly prepared to take on that revolution? What I would suggest to our people here in Kenosha and, uh, and other communities throughout the country is to start policing and patrolling yourselves. We have to start creating our own established and vibrant community. And one way to do that is take brothers like myself who are military veterans, who has experience in warfare, who do know how to properly put protect and police communities, neighborhoods, black cities, etc. Utilize our services, and then in return, we properly train, aid, and assist you into policing and protecting your community. If our people aren't willing to do the necessary steps in order to get the necessary freedom, justice, and equality that have been long deprived of us in this country, then there's gonna be another shooting another killing of a brother or a sister. And we're gonna be out here crying and complaining and using the same rhetoric and using the same strategies that have been old and regurgitated time and time again. Once again, I sympathize with the family over the shooting of our brother. But we have to start thinking way differently other than just crying for help and just protesting. We protest too much and nothing is getting done. So what are we going to do different than what we've been doing? Crying and begging to them to give you equal rights don't solve a thing. United under this banner of the red, black, and green, of universal African nationalism is what's going to make the difference. Marcus Garvey has always stated that we must do for self. Up you mighty race, accomplish what you will. In 2021, we cannot allow ourselves to continue to be at the mercy of our enemy. They're willing to prosecute some of their people just to uphold that system. Their system isn't broken. Their system works fine for them. And as long as you continue to try to fight to, to make changes for the system instead of enacting your own system, then you're gonna continue to be at the mercy of your enemy that's gonna protect their system by any means necessary. So once again, I sympathize with the family because as a black man, I want no danger or harm happen to neither brother nor sister. But we have to change something differently, family. We can't continue to just come out here, march, 
beg, protest, cry, and then try to gather all these allies. What was, where's Black Lives Matter at now? Where are all these people that say they down with Black Lives Matter now? Where are all these people that were saying Black Lives Matter back in the summertime, but six months later, it's only a few of us out here, and we and we still doing the same thing. So find these kids and stuff, get it, you know, kids getting killed, kids getting um abducted, these girls getting getting raped and getting violence, you know what I'm saying, and getting kicked out with the sex trafficking. Hell yeah, a lot of people should be out here doing something about that. That's the whole. That's where the Black Lives should matter. I don't need an organization to tell me my life matter. Every day that I wake up and I and I thank the most high and I look in that mirror, my life matter to me. Cause I woke up and I'm seeing another day. We don't need no, we don't need nothing to tell us that. No, here. We cannot continue to be afraid. We cannot continue to be scared. Which is why as, as, a, as a brother, I always put the onus on black men first. Why? Because the black man is the head of the family. The black man is the leader of the family. The black man is the strength in which the family gains inspiration, guidance, and provision from. So when the black man is not acting like the, acting like in his natural state the way the creator designed for him to be, then you get this chaos and confusion to where women have to take the lead. And it's causing confusion with many women. Take away all black men out of a community. Where does that lead the women and children? It leads them defensive. Even though we got some strong sisters out here. Okay, there's, there's some strong women out uh, here. We, we do, we, we do, but you gotta look at it from an overall view as well. You take the men, you take the men out of a home, you take the men out of the community, you take the men away from their natural position of part. And then his enemy comes in, guess what he's gonna do? He'll do the same thing that any any animal in the animal kingdom do. He's gonna take over that territory and he's gonna view the women and children as spoils of war. Even the women are left defenseless. Like, there's a lot of strong women out here and we're all fighting a system that is fucked up. This system, yeah, it may not be broken because it's doing what it was made to do, but the fact of the matter is, is the system was set up to keep black men and women down. So yeah, it works in that sense, but when it comes to serving justice, it don't work in that piece. Just got off. But has the system ever worked in justice for our people? No, it hasn't. It, exactly. That's why we're out here saying no justice, no peace. Because the fact of the matter is, is a white cop just got away with shooting a black man in the back seven times. Seven. And, yeah. And, and, and How is that okay? It's not. Because it's not even justifiable. But as you said, you said, well, who was fighting no justice, no peace. You just saw the fact that they didn't give the brother and his family justice. No, and there's so many of us out here. But when is it going to take for us to have no peace? Because if we're going to rebel, do you truly believe that our people will actually win that fight? We may not win the fight, but we can win the war. Because look at it this way. All of the wars in the history look at, you know, abolishing slavery. Do you, do you think we were really prepared for that war actually, either? Actually, the real reason why we... we real reason why slavery was over it had nothing to do with the civil war the dollar war over 100 years stretch with over 300 rebellions in this country forced america's hand into uh, ending child of slavery because they couldn't contain the rebellion all throughout the south and how is this not any how is this any different than any other rebellion because of the simple fact that the vast majority of our people Instead of arming up themselves against their enemy, we arm against oh, each other and fight against each other and bicker amongst each, each other in right? every aspect of our social, economic, and political lives. That's only with certain groups. No, that's across the board in general with black people. The war that I'm talking about right now is cops being allowed to get away <laughs> with shooting <laughs> black people. Okay, so cops are being yeah, allowed to do it, and I, and, I don't the entire system. and I don't disagree with that. But unless you're willing to fight against that same system by, by utilizing they same tactics somehow to tell them not to do that to us again, they can continue to do it time and time again. What we should have been doing was after all the riots and the damn protests, we should have been going back in our neighborhoods and getting amongst each other and coming up with a different strategy to try to fight against this system. So what would you recommend then? What would you, if... You say that everyone should be going back to their communities and coming up with a strategy. What would be your strategy? My strategy would be this. First and foremost, 
if black people live, the majority of black people in this one neighborhood or whatever, you have to establish some type of security function in your own neighborhood. You have to. And it got to be the men that do it too. Now, we can train our women too. I'm not against that. If I'm in a household... So you think women need special training? No, women need just as much as defense training as men do. But the men have to be able to <laughs> be on the front lines protecting <laughs> the outer perimeter of the community. Men and dad go, brothers and men, these corners and shit like this, making sure that nothing bad happens in our community. And that ain't just with police. You can't necessarily defund police. Because that means that you're going to be ready to go to war against the government. We're not ready. It's a matter of doing for self. And what I mean by doing for self is, in the neighborhood that that Jacob Blake got shot at, you should have been having brothers out there policing and protecting that community. You should have been having older men out there ensuring that nothing harmful or dangerous comes into your neighborhood. Because of the simple fact that if police steps into your community, they should be able to function with and, and work alongside with the people of the community. That's what the that's what the whole purpose of policing is. But we don't but we don't live in a society like that. Why? Because the police itself is an occupying force that's that's always been held bent on decimated belittlement and keeping black men down. But black men gotta stop allowing themselves to be down all the time. Black men have to be able to you be able to unite as men. Fires the movement or in general. Fires the movement, no, Black Lives doesn't matter because of the simple fact that when you have an organization out here and then they, they ended up having to change uh, the outliners of their mission statement, which totally eradicates black men altogether, then it doesn't matter because you have to have a stable family in the household. You cannot have a black family without the black man, period. He is the leader and he is the head. He is the protector and provider. When you take the man out of the household, you eliminate the concept of family. So if we're not speaking, so if we're not speaking on the concept of family, you're not speaking Black Lives Matter. Now, in general, should Black Lives Matter? Of course it should. But do we need a little slogan or rhetoric to tell us that it matters? Absolutely not. Because every day that I wake up as a black man, my life matters to me because my life matters to myself, to my family, and to my child. Hope that answers your question. Let, let, let's, let, let's take this situation into producing something different for us as a people. I'm not speaking on other people. I speak directly to us as black people because this problem affects us. It don't affect white people as a whole. It don't affect brown people as a whole. It always affects us because the media always points the finger at us in order to incite some type of racial strike. So my solution to analyze in this entire situation is self-determination, do for self. Until you engage with an active and involved security force in your own community, and you establish some type of self-sufficiency in your own community, we're gonna come out here time and time again, we're gonna have the same problems existing no matter what. My sympathies are to the Blake family, my sympathies are to any brother and sister who gets injured, harmed, or killed by the hands of any law enforcement of any of our enemies that is hell bent on persecuting us. But now it's the time for us to do something different for ourselves. Now it's the time for us to take that mantle of stop being afraid of being scared. In a revolution, people are gonna die. You have to be able to sacrifice. Show me what you love and I'll show you what I'll be willing to sacrifice. And that is the mindset our people have to have going forward. Let's make this 2021 into a lovely year for our people to progress and thrive. Peace and love, 100.